Melaville says, Azalea asked me questions. Also, Azalea completely ignores over 95% of the questions. Hey, nobody said I was going to answer them in the comment section down below. But with that being said, let's jump into today's video. Hey, what is going on everybody and welcome to Fantasia for today. We're going to be jumping into a Q&A session. Now, I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone who has left a comment on last week's video posing a question that they want answered. And also, thank you to everybody here for giving me such positive comments and such uplifting support. I really can't thank you guys enough. Whether you subscribed from years back or you just subscribed last week, Thank you so much. I hope you stick around for the ride, and I hope you enjoy it as well. Now, I can't wait to see what questions you guys have left for me, so let's just jump right into this. Can you tie me up in your basement? Well, aren't we off to a fantastic start, guys. All right, moving on to some actual sensible questions from some actual sensible people. Shawlings asks, I'd like to know about how you came up with your channel name. Any funny or interesting stories behind the creation of your channel? Well, Shanlings, my channel name was actually created from the name of a flower. Now, I came up with the name Azalea because, well, I just like the word Azalea. Although the one thing I didn't like about the word Azalea is how it was spelled. It just does not look right to me, okay? It doesn't look right to me, so I put an extra L in there, and for some reason, it just looked better, okay? And that is why I also pronounce my channel name Azalea instead of Azalea. Just, uh, just a little, little differentiation there, yeah? Hey Aza, can you use your Konami when infiltration you to give us more Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu -Oh! And how do we come back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Ah, dang it guys, I knew this would come up. Alright, so when did I first start playing Yu-Gi-Oh! and how did I enjoy it? Well, I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! kind of more seriously, like actually, actually following the rules. Yeah, imagine that. Imagine actually following the rules. So I started that probably during freshman year of college, so that was actually quite a while back, and got into it because I started watching Arc 5 and loved the Melodious Archetype, so I picked up the deck, a couple friends of mine also picked up budget decks from that era, and we just started playing. Over the course of the years, I started expanding my collection as more and more archetypes are introduced in Arc 5 and then eventually in Vrains, and we went off from there. I actually started collecting cards though when I was very, very young, sometime back when I was a kid, where you know the original Yu-Gi-Oh! series was still airing on 4Kids and stuff like that. That was, oh man, good old times. Good old times. As for coming back to Yu-Gi-Oh! and making more content, or even things like playing Duel Links, I don't think we'll be doing that anytime soon. Now don't get me wrong, I still love Yu-Gi-Oh! Still a fantastic franchise, still a fantastic card game. It's just that for me, having that personal aspect of being able to play somebody in person, be able to hold physical cards, is much more enjoyable than playing online. So until I can consistently find some sort of group in real life to play with again, I kind of doubt that I'll be getting back into the game anytime soon. On the other hand, EvilWiz117 asks, how and when did you get into Epic 7? Also, love the videos, keep up the great work. Thanks, man. How I got into Epic 7 was actually because my brother was playing it on his phone one day, and I just walked into his room, I looked over his shoulder. I mean, I, I, I guess... I guess we're lucky that it was Epic 7 and not, like, something else. But yeah, I saw he was playing Epic 7, and uh, I, I downloaded the game because I thought the animations were amazing. I believe I saw his uh, animations for, like, Assyria, and I thought, wow, that's a mobile game? That's pretty cool. So I got it, and eventually started playing it for a little bit as my side game, and that's how I developed my love for this game. Marty McFly asks, any collaboration you want to see on Epic 7? Yeah, actually, I do. I've uh, The one that I want to see the most is probably the Rising of the Shield Hero, because, I mean, come on, guys, come on. Ra Raftalia, yeah, Raftalia, guys, I mean, come on. Raftalia, yeah, like, Ra Raftalia, come on, guy. okay. No? No, uh, alright, okay, fine, fine. You just, uh, go have your Persona 5 collab or something, then. Not like anyone's done that before. 
Wesley Na asks, how did Carrot become your waifu? I mean, have you seen her design? Like, have you, have you seen her design? I mean, just, oh, yeah. <laughs> A top, top notch. Oh, top notch. Monster Uwu says, who is your favorite Epic 7 unit at the moment? Hmm, probably Briarwitch Assyria. She is, she is pretty top, she's pretty up there. Yeah, she's probably my favorite at this very moment. Also, who's the better waifu, Aether or Ervalyn? Oh, the actual, now here's a real tough question. Uh, I mean, between the two of them, I, the best waifu, I, it's, it's Aether, okay, it's Aether. Who the heck likes, who even likes Ervalyn? Dude, what even is this? Cataclysm asks, also, top five waifus and or husbandos. Ooh, this is kind of tough. I guess I can put them in no particular order, okay? Briarwitch Assyria, Faithless Lydica, Flan, Carrot, and of course, Charles. Can't have a top five waifu list without Charles up in there. I'm so sorry I'm about to butcher your name, but Diddy Kusindas asks, Hey Azza, my question is, which is your favorite skin in the game? Well, seeing as we don't really have too many skins in the game as of right now, I mean, you know, there, it's really hard to decide. There's so many different uh, artistic aspects of these skins. A lot of them people think of as, as a side grade, and other people think as a, just a straight-up improvement. I mean, overall, it's really hard to decide. I mean, there's just so many different aesthetically pleasing elements about so many of the skins that were released. Indie Waffles asks, Hey Azza, which hero do you think has the most best or most interesting background? Well, this question can actually be taken two different ways, right? The first way we can take this is a physical background for the character, right? As in, when you're viewing the hero portrait of the character who has the best background. And the answer to that is Briar Witch Assyria. Now, the second way this can be taken is story-wise, right? Who has a story that you really, really like or that you think is very interesting? And the answer to that is Briar Witch Assyria. Super SX5 asks, what's your favorite animation? Celine's S3 is a top contender in my opinion. Well, for me, I would say that the best S3 animation, or at least my favorite one, is Briar Witch Assyria. RDX Gamer asks, what are some units in Epic 7 that you have grown to like over time that you originally had no attachment to? Well, that probably actually has to be Carrot. I don't know how I got into, I mean, we all we all know how I got into Carrot by now, but I don't really know how I, like, actually got into Carrot, but I guess Carrot would probably be the answer to that question. The second question is, what will it take for you to embrace the greatness of Basar? Cataclysm asks, if you could pick one champion in the game to just suddenly disappear, who would it be? Basar. But he also asks, what would you say is the current meta? And what do you like or dislike about this meta? Well, the current meta right now to me seems to be speed based and very control based, right? You have things like Cerise, you have Fairy Tail Tenebria as very prominent picks, and then you also have those knights that can help add utility to the team. You have Falconer Clurry, you have A Raz, and overall, I would say, I think I like this meta. I think I like this meta more than the previous one where everyone just took four knights in Ruel and just sat there forever. Literally forever. Can you say my name? Asks Thick Daddy Jr. <laughs> With Canada asks, my question is, what do you do outside of YouTube? Any other hobbies? Yes, I actually do enjoy quite a few hobbies. Uh, outside of the obvious uh, gacha games, I do enjoy some anime and manga from time to time. I've been really digging some light novels lately though. That is an incredible pastime that I wish I could have more time to indulge in. But unfortunately, 
the day is only 24 hours long. Duradara asks, outside of Fate Grand Order, do you play any other gacha games? Why, why yes, yes we do actually. You're looking at it right now, the wonderful world of Epic Seven. But aside from Fate Grand Order and Epic Seven, which most of you guys know that I do play, I have actually recently started playing Princess Connect Redive. It is it's a great side game, it's just, I mean, skip t skip tickets, guys. You can just skip content and get reward. I mean, that is, it is uh, mind-boggling why more games do not have that kind of system. I also did dabble in a few other games last year, such as Crossing Void, Ark Knights, and Guardian Tales. Liasim Oyatse asks, Do you have any favorite books? Or any favorite authors? And yeah, actually I do. My favorite series of all time is Spice and Wolf. And the author for it, Isuna Hasekura, is probably one of my favorite authors of all time as well. Ah uh, yes, Thick Daddy Jr. back at it again with uh, another question. Do you watch anime? And if so, what's your favorite? Wow. Yes I do, and my favorite series of all time has to go to Spice and Wolf. That series just resonates with me so much. I don't know, I don't know why. But there's just something about it that's so simplistic, yet also so intriguing, that once I start watching it again, or once I start reading it again, I just can't put it down. Don't know why. Ah, uh, Hentai Master 384 asks, are you a fellow man of culture? If so, what is your favorite anime genre? Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty proud to be a fellow man of culture, although <laughs> prob probably not in the the genre that that you are a that you are a master of. Uh, but the genre that I enjoy the most is probably gonna be fantasy because they usually have a very strong element of world building in them. And having that development of an environment, of a culture, of those circumstances that don't necessarily have any ties with real life, but are seamlessly integrated with the characters, the setting, and the lore, those kinds of elements that are so immersive really bring me to appreciate the the writing that goes behind those stories. And so that is why fantasy is probably my number one favorite genre to indulge in. Serge Luca asks, what's your life job if this is just a hobby? Well Serge, I'm actually a full-time middle school math teacher. Honestly, this is all really... I don't even know how I got to this point in life. When I was in school, I absolutely hate, like, I hated math. Like, that was, it was literally the worst subject, ever. like, I absolutely despised it. I don't, how, how, how did they even hire me? Zenkage asks, what's something you enjoy that we might not expect? And that's actually a really good question. Now, for those of you guys who know me a little bit better, you're gonna know that I, I'm very OCD and very, particular about certain things and that has actually led me to discovering something that I've never it even surprised myself how much I enjoy this but I love watching detailing videos like car detailing videos if you want to check out some of these uh, like videos of just people cleaning cars like deep cleaning cars I'd highly recommend uh, checking out this channel called The Detail Geek. He has some absolutely amazing content, and I, I definitely binge watch his archive. It is really, really satisfying. He also asks, as a teacher, what is one thing you would want to teach students or people in general? That's a very good question. I really wish that they taught, in a broader sense, financial literacy to kids and even even adults. I think that's a very good life skill to have, is how to literally manage the money that you need in order to stay alive in this world. And we make a full circle back to Epic 7, Blank Shell asks, what is your favorite team in RTA? And that has got to be Slow Cleave, just last pick Rose and DPS the heck out of everything that you see. That is the most satisfying feeling ever. King Water asks, 
Which character gives you the most success in RTA? Can you hear? Lapu de Tuma asks, what hero first made you use and embrace control in Epic 7? For me, it was Cerise. Hmm, that's actually a good question. Unfortunately, I don't have Cerise, although she probably would be up there as a, as a unit that I would really enjoy using. What, what I really got into was, uh, <laughs> Broman. I mean, come on. You can't... You can't fight the Broman. Yeah, what are you gonna do, huh? What are you gonna do? Resist? <laughs> Matthew Wong asks, I want to know how you choose to fight in arena. Like, why you choose certain heroes against certain comps in regular arena? Well, that's actually a pretty good question, although I don't think I can give a really direct answer to it because it really depends on how I feel that day. Sometimes if I want to get things over with quick, I would just look for slow teams that don't have a speed contester like Cerise or Flitica in it, and I would just slow cleave it down with Rose and 3 DPS units. Other days, if I find really squishy teams and I just outspeed them, RB takes care of everything. And Sometimes I just feel like trolling around and playing with random comps, so I would bring in a Broman control team comp and just uh, just stunlock the opponent for like 50 turns. Pingu the Pooh asks, Hey Azza, what are your thoughts on Shu, Alencia, and Fire Ken in their current form as well as in the current meta? Well, if you're looking for one of these to build, Shu is pretty strong, she can do a lot of uh, damage, and she's a pretty decent support unit. Fire Ken, ever since he got his buff, has been a lot more consistent. I really enjoy using him, but he does struggle against ice units, and also he really only has single target skills, so that's part of his uh, detriment there. And Alensi, Alensi is probably the most well-rounded out of all three of these, providing defense buffs, being able to strip, having Mind's Eye to absolutely sack people with her defense break on S1. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of utility that comes from that. So if you were to try to prioritize one of these, Probably Alencia, but uh, it really depends on your um, playstyle and which units you need in your team comp more. And the last question for this video comes from KrowXZD, who asks, Do you have any advice for smaller content creators? And I'm really glad that this question actually came up, because I do get this from time to time, and the best advice I can give you is simply do what you enjoy. You have to be intrinsically motivated to do something like content creation. The moment you start getting external motivating factors in, such as trying to get famous, trying to get recognition, trying to make money off the platform, that's when things can start to take a turn and you'll see your enjoyment diminish, right? Make content on things that you enjoy doing anyway. Personally, for me right now, that's Epic 7. I play the game anyway, several hours a day, and I get a lot of enjoyment from it, and I, I have this platform to essentially share my experiences, my stories from the game with everyone else. I used to, like I mentioned earlier in the video, play Yu-Gi-Oh! and this channel was actually created to share my experiences with that. However, over the course of the years, my interest in the game started to dwindle when I could not play in real life anymore. I stopped collecting physical cards, and at that point I started to see it have a negative effect on the content that I was creating. I was not motivated to make things anymore. It was really just kind of me going through the motions every weekend, you know, struggling to get things edited and pumped out, because it just didn't feel satisfying to me anymore. And I took a year off. I took a whole year off. I think I started around May, and I came back in like April or May of the following year with just epic 7 uploads. I did not expect anything from it. I just got into the game more seriously, and I started playing it more frequently. And here we are. You know, we have this channel built with a fantastic community. I still have fantastic uh, supporters who still play Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, who are in my Discord server, and we still talk about the game. But I just, I don't create content on it anymore. So, main advice here, do something that you enjoy. And once you stop enjoying it, don't make any more content on it. Because it's going to feel like a chore, it's going to feel like a job, and it won't feel good. And with that being said, guys, thank you all so much for watching this video. 
I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, subscribe for more Epic 7 content, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what I can do to improve. And until next time, take care.